coming on guys this is a video you guys have all been wanting and it's over drop shot before I go into further more details um, I want to see who's an active subscriber um, so go ahead and give the video a thumbs up I'm trying to see who's actually subscribed rather than just fans that are coming to watch my video from my other social media sites so if you're subscribed to my channel please go ahead and give the video a thumbs up it supports me um, it motivates me to keep making these videos so please do so you can also comment below if you would like I'm gonna go ahead and go over it and I'm gonna actually retie it I'm gonna cut it off into everything I just have a regular mojo and the reason why I'm showing this combo is because the price on it's phenomenal um, so I know pretty much mostly everyone can afford it I have a few combos um, but this is just the mojo bass drop shot rod so it's fairly inexpensive it's around the 90 buck range um, so most, most, most of you guys can afford it and the reel on there is only around 35, 40 bucks and that's, uh, um, Abby Garcia or a spinning reel. So as you can tell, I have it on braid, I have it on 20 pound braid. Um, and this is very important that you guys are going to need to know what we're doing is we're tying a uni to uni knot because you're going to want fluorocarbon. You're not going to want to be dropping the braid down on. So the fluorocarbon, this is, you're going to need to pair it up right. So. I recommend 20 pound braid and 10 pound floor to you need to uni knot to 10 pound floor fluorocarbon. If you go like to you need to uni knot 12 pound fluorocarbon, what it actually do is that fluorocarbon will cut through the braid. And I know that sounds stupid, but it's just how it is. Um, the you need to uni knot will not stay tight and everything, and it just cut right through. So that that's why pairing it up so important. So I recommend 20 pound braid and 10 pound fluorocarbon. So let's go ahead and get this started. All right guys, so what I got, like I said, I got the 20 pound braid, which is right here. That's a 20 pound braid. And I got 10 pound fluorocarbon. Got around 12 foot of line for the fluorocarbon. And then the braid's already spooled on the reel. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do, I'm, I'm gonna try to explain this to you. I don't know if it's gonna work out on this video, but if it doesn't, then I can totally make another video um, with like a rope or something thick where I can actually show you and you guys can see because I don't think you're going to be able to see this. Um, so what you're going to do, see how you have that end of the floor carbon with the braid. I'm going to go ahead and start over. See, there, here, here's the braid, here's the floor carbon. And you're going to want to line them up like so. All right, that's probably a little too long, so. There you go, like that. And first, you're gonna take the one end, which this is the fluorocarbon end, and it's just like a uni knot. So you're gonna wrap it around. Like that. And you're gonna, if you've tied a uni knot, then you know what to do from here. You just go, go ahead in the knot. Wrap it around around five times. I'm not gonna tighten that down all the way, but do the same thing on the other side. Right there. Now you're gonna want to wet your line. And this is where most people mess up. If you're gonna if you're gonna cinch it down, then it's what's gonna do is it's gonna put so much pressure on it, it's just gonna break. Or it might not break right now, but it might break when you're hooking a fish. So you're gonna want to go very slow. Right there. Make sure it's tight and everything. There you go. So then you have your braid right here. It fades into your four, fluorocarbon. So now what you're gonna do is just cut your tagins. Don't cut, I don't cut them too short. Just to be safe. So you're gonna wanna leave it tad. As you can tell right there. So there you have your uni to uni knot right there. And I cut this down, or I take a lot of line off to start off with, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean, for the fluorocarbon, that doesn't mean that I'm gonna need it that long. It all depends on what type of a rod you're using. Right here on the Mojo Bass, as you can see, the eyelids are a little more open, you know? So the uni knot can 
can fully go through there without kind of fraying it or ticking it or any type of deal where it would want to break the line. But then if I have like a micro guide rod, then you're going to want to make your floor carving a little bit shorter. So what we'll do is, I'm not going to do it on this one because I know the mojo bass is all right. It's all right for the mojo bass, but I'll tighten this down. You don't want it to go through your eyelids where the uni, uni, the uni to uni knot is. So let's go ahead and reel up some of the braid. There you go, the uni knot's about at the end of the pole. I'm gonna take the fluorocarbon. Say, so, all right, that's where, it's, that's where you're gonna want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go cut it right there. And I would say that's about three and a half to four foot leader. And that's for if you're using micro guides. That's just a quick tip because it can really mess you up. It messed me up during a tournament. I wasn't thinking, it was actually on um, World Finals. I went to hook set of fish and it just broke me off and I was wondering why and then I was thinking, oh, it's because of that uni to uni not spraying through my eyelids and you're just not thinking about it. Hey guys, just a little quick tip right there. So, micro guides, shorter. If you have a regular rod where you think it can go through right, then you can just use a longer leader for your floor cover. So next part is the hook. Um, the hook I'm using is just one of these trocar drop shot hooks. Um, simple as it gets, got mine at Oakwood Bait and Tackle. Um, so that's the hook I'm using, which is pretty great. And it all depends what I'm gonna be doing. If I'm gonna be dropping more in brush, sometimes I'll use like a rebarb hook, which is what I had on at the moment. This is a rebarb hook, as you can tell right there has the barb or the rebarb at the top those are good as well um, but if I'm just lip hooking it these trocar drop shot hooks work pretty well and the weight I'm using I like the circle weights um, more than just the regular ones like that I, I prefer these I feel like it drops faster um, just personal preference I'm gonna use a pretty heavy one if I'm in the wind um, because if you're drop shot in that 30 foot water, you don't want your boat, even if your boat's pushing around and everything, you want to be able to stay on this fish. Starting off with tying the hook on, um, the only knot I really tie is a uni knot. Um, I'll be sure to make a video on it. Most of you guys are going to tie the polymer knot, which that's totally fine. You can tie that. Um, but personal preference, I like the uni, to uni, the uni knot. You got me saying uni to uni knot now. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to pull a decent bit of line out because you're gonna want that um, tag in to be long because you're gonna to wanna to put that weight on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tie my basic uni knot. I'll be sure to make a video on the uni to uni knot or uni knot because I, I definitely think it's the best knot out there. There's some studies shown at some line companies to show what knot was the best. So, all right. I got my tag in right here. I can tell it's fairly long. I got my hook right here tied onto my pole. This is one of the most important steps. You're gonna to wanna to get your tag in. Take your tag in. Go back through the eyelid. And why am I doing this? If you don't go through the eyelid, your hook can be facing sideways, it can be facing down. If you go through the eyelid, what it's gonna do is your hook's gonna stay. So you're just, all you're simply gonna do is just drag it back through. So as you can tell right there, you see how the hook's pointing straight up? That's exactly what you want. If your hook's pointing sideways, or if it's pointing down, you did something wrong. But if you put the line back through, what it's gonna do is it's gonna keep that hook pointing up, and that's exactly what you want. It's perfect right there. So lastly, I'm gonna throw on the weight. Um, I'm gonna cut my leader for my weight a little bit shorter to about a foot and a half, two foot. Put that on real quick. You can either just put it on or you can tie it on. And for you guys that don't really lake fishing and you're saying this is probably not useful to me, I would totally use this in a pond. Drop shot's great for a pond, guys. Really, really great. So don't don't think it's not. All right, so tie my weight on there. Cut that a little bit shorter. There you go, guys. That's my drop shot rig right there. I got about a foot and a half liter from the weight there. And just depending on where the fish are staged, I can cut it. Um, I might run it a little bit shorter later on in the day. Like I could put it about right there to be good as well. Um, but as you can tell, this is how you know you've done it successfully, is your hooks straight up, 
force your weights at the bottom, but just be sure to put your line back through. That's a very important step. There you go, guys. There's a drop shot rig right there. It's looking pretty solid. Um, on, like I said, my Mojo Bass drop shot rod, which is really great. Um, if you guys are on a budget, definitely really great rod to have. Um, I actually own two, two of them. And then my reel is an Aura S by um, Abu Garcia. And that's really great on cost as well. So if you guys are just wanting an overall inexpensive combo, this is definitely a great combo. And this is the one that I love. I mean, it's really inexpensive and you can't go wrong with it. So I'm gonna stop rambling guys. Let's go catch some fish.